Do I have to applaud over that by myself? <laughs> Man. And I know somebody in here is OCD, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on. Are we okay now? Welcome to Louisa Christian Church this morning. We're glad you're here. We're about welcoming people in the name of Christ. We want to welcome you for who you are. We're about sharing Christ. We keep Jesus the main thing. We might not agree on everything, but we agree on the Lord Jesus. We're here to worship Him and to share Him with others. And our last part of our mission statement is to make disciples. So we want to grow. We're thinkers. We're learners. Now, there's a lot of announcements on here. Probably be hard for Megan to keep up. I got a lot of slides for announcements, Megan. You want to go forward? Next Sunday is Easter. Yes, yes, it's exciting. So there will be the outdoor service. Uh, be right out here, 9 a.m., unless the weather gives us a hard time, but it's supposed to be nice. And there's an, is anyone like hunting Easter eggs here? Children? Easter, yes! All right, there's a couple, there's a couple in the back. Yeah, Easter egg hunt at 10. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people come for that. And then our traditional worship here. Next slide. All right, there's the Easter egg hunt just to bring it home. All right, Megan, thank you. Next one. All right. Opportunities to grow. See me if you like to grow spiritually. We have Sunday school classes and Bible studies. Go ahead. Next one, Megan. All right, there's an opening in the audiovisual ministry upstairs to help Jimmy um, and Megan and Aaron and, and anyone else who's up there. Um, they like to have a week off. Once in a while, we're short. And um, we love to have someone who can fill in once in a while, whether it's running the PowerPoint or the camera. All right, there is an emergency board meeting after the service today, and then after that will be the worship committee for those of you who are on the, mission, are on the worship committee. Membership class is coming up April 14th. This isn't just about the structure of the church. Is there, we're going to go into the Bible and look at the foundational truths that are important to our faith. Go ahead, Megan. That's it. Any other announcements? I know there's a couple. The peanut butter are left, really? Yes. Oh, those are, the, those are awesome. <laughs> Your husband ate half of the one, Becky said. Next week is the Judas. We turn, please turn in your Judas bags next week. And uh, that's all I have for announcements. Anyone else? Butch? Thank you. For, uh, the congregation. Um, I mean, not because of, but as we all saw this past uh, this past week, how volatile things can be. And uh, we have had uh, to everybody should feel good enough about it on a certain level. We've always had a level of security, but we're now very fortunate to have in our congregation people who are who are really trained professionals. Law enforcement or past and, law enforcement. And, yeah. You know, when it becomes actionable, they actually know how that works. And so I think it's especially good with the children, but for all of us, uh, that this is being instituted. There are a number of levels. Uh, anybody interested in, in what that is, uh, I think Doug would be a person to uh, talk to, but, but any of us can kind of fill you in a little bit. And, uh, but I think it, it's something that uh, the times have uh, for, and we're going to uh, going to be instituting them, and it's not going to change anything necessarily, but just uh, just uh, that you should be aware of it, and there may be some you know uh, drill at some point. I don't know, but uh, just so that you're aware of it, I wanted to make that point. Very good, Butch. Thank you. Yeah, better to be safe. Better to be safe, and we're so grateful for the law enforcement or past law enforcement that attend that are helping us with this. Uh, Strategy, I guess you could say. Some common sense things. Have a plan. <clears throat> Have a plan. So, would you please stand? Let's worship through the call of worship. Stand if you're able. <clears throat> Imprisoned.
by sin, no hope within. In shadows of grief, the darkness is near. The Savior has come, our burdens to bear. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen again. Let's join together singing All Glory, Laud, and Honor, 192, all verses. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus rule in your heart is to find joy. Please join me in the prayer of the day and, and we follow it with the Lord's prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you humbly acknowledging our need for your grace. We confess that we've settled into the darkness, selfishness, and sin. Forgive us for believing our efforts alone can save us. Christ's obedience, that we find true freedom. The gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Seated and let's join together singing Break Thou the Bread of Life, number 321, first and second stanza. <clears throat>
Welcome to communion. As all of you know, today is Palm Sunday, and after the service, the children are, or oh, before we go out, the children will be passing our palms to be placed on the cross in front of the church. Palm Sunday has, is also means a busy week, holy week. And we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which are holy days. And on Thursday is Monday, it's called Monday Thursday. This is the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem with the people waving palms as he came in. Later in the day, he met with his disciples in the upper room. And this was to be the last meal that Jesus would share with them. Also, we know this as the Lord's Supper. And during this time with his disciples, Jesus took bread, broke it, and the wine, and poured it. And he has left these emblems for us as a reminder of the sacrifice that he made on, that, on the next day, which was the day that he was crucified. Let us give thanks for the bread and the wine. Heavenly Father, let your blessing be on us as we pass through the holy days of this week, in which we remember the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we partake of the bread representing your bruised and broken body and the wine, your spilled blood, may we do so in a manner pleasing unto you. Amen. took the bread and broke it and passed it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me until I come again. He then passed the cup to his disciples, saying, this is the blood of the new covenant, shed for the remission of sins. Take, drink ye, 
all of us. And now we come to that part of our service where we have the opportunity to give back to him a portion of what he has given to us. Heavenly Father, we offer these gifts to you in gratefulness for the grace and abundant love you give us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that you would use it to build your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. Good morning, everyone. So this song is called In Jesus' Name, and this is really a prayer for all of you and all of us. So to listen to the words that when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name, because there is no other name above that. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven, and I pray this for you. I pray for your healing, the circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over. I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise he is faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's the God of possible. I 
Children's time. Children, come on up. Where are you guys? There's Brooks, Nolan, Emerson. Kinsley brought a friend. It's Emery. Give me your name again. Emery. Emery is her name. Emery. Griffin. Is that Eleanor back there? All right. Look. <gasps> Ava and Sophie are here. Yay. Good to see you guys. Kinsley and Emery, would you, would you help me out? Oh, I got a bunch of helpers. I would like each of you, as soon as I give my little introduction, to hand out all of these palm leaves to all the children to hand out. Okay, one second, one second. So what are the palm leaves for? Why are we reaching? Palm Sunday. Yes, and why do we have palm, palms on Palm Sunday? What happened in the Bible on Palms that we celebrated on Palm Sunday? Does anyone know? No. Jesus, okay, at least an honest answer. I, I dare you guys to say no. I love that. Jesus is going towards his ultimate mission to the cross where he'll save us by dying on the cross. And on his way there, he'll go into the temple and claim ownership it ownership of it. And on the way there, the people were so happy to see him. They just started waving palm branches, palm branches and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yes. <laughs> and that wasn't even planned. <laughs> All right. Kinsley and Emery, can you make sure each, children get, each child here gets about 10 of those? And then so everyone can help hand them out? I'll, I'll tell you what. Can I spread those out with others? John, can you help me out? Kurt? There's... Brooks, can you give some of those to the other kids?
for you during the sermon when you get so excited, you just have to wave something, okay? Hold your hand up. There's, we need some more out there. Who needs, do you guys have one? Okay, all right. All right, good job, you guys. Any other hands? Anyone else need one? All right, Lord God, we thank you for these children and for their faith and their love. Bless them, bless their families, and bless their Sunday school teachers. We thank you for them. Be with them, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we have one? Good job. Yes, you can have one. Thanks for asking. That was very nice. Good job. Good job. You want one? They want one each? They should get one. And then I want to invite Wilford Sims to come up and read the scriptures for us. Wilford? What are you afraid of? sure I'd be back again today, but I did make it, and it's my great honor to introduce you to my daughter who's been on your prayer list for, so, for the past two years when she was uh, diagnosed with Parkinson's. She is with us today. Wave, Laura, so everybody know where you are. <laughs> Scripture today, I'll be reading from the King James Version from Luke. Chapter 19, starting verse 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never a man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had told them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they sat Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, these stones would immediately cry out. I'd like to lead us in a time of prayer, and it's a lot of people in need of prayer, and, and maybe you are too, I ask that you would join your heart with me, and it's, it's hard to concentrate, but uh, your involvement in this matters, so please join with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We're looking for you this morning, your grace, your mercy, the life you offer us. I ask that you would speak to each person here in a way that, that they've never been touched before. Uh, we, I pray for the burdens people have brought here, the concerns, the stress, the anxiety. We have come to offer you our lives. 
because you have given us yours. And we believe that when we offer you our lives, we find life to the fullest. Come, Lord Jesus. Let your Spirit move among us. We pray for our surrounding communities and our neighbors, that you would bless them and they would draw closer to you, that you would even use us in their lives to encourage, to bless those we're around. We lift up those on our prayer list. The names are many. The ones brought to my attention this week include the family of Earl Wright, Gail Prophet and her home fire, who has lost so much, her family, we pray for her. For Steve Rogers, you would be with him and help him heal, use this in his life. The family of Kevin Colvin, we pray for. We pray for Teresa Wright. We thank you that Laura Sims Timon's with us this morning. We pray that you would bless her and heal her, Lord. So, Lord, please come. Get me out of the way. Speak through me, in spite of me, for your glory, for your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This weekend, we, uh, Dana and I visited our daughter in Washington, D.C., Emily. And while we were there, we were noticing the dogs. And the reason we were noticing the dogs is because in Blue Ridge Shores, where we live, there's been some unfortunate dogs, dog attacks. Dogs getting loose. People who have big dogs, they can't hold them on the leash. And, and so people have been attacked. And so we carry pepper spray <laughs> in D.C. as well. However, in D.C., it really turned out it wasn't necessary. Most people in D.C.'s dogs are tiny. <laughs> They're little guys. And, I mean, they might not be dangerous, but if you get a little dog mad, they'll drive you crazy just barking at you. But there was this one little dog who was coming at us across the street, and we watched it, and Dana said to me, listen to that dog bark. And it, was, it wasn't barking to irritate it. It was just barking because it found Jesus or something. I mean, it was just the happiest dog. It was like, bark. Bark, and just going along, and then we're, and it stopped for a while, and then it's crossing this busy, dangerous street. You know, the owner's just walking along, and it just, it's almost across the street, and starts barking again. It's just so happy. And this message today, I pray we learn a, a lesson from this dog. From this dog, joy comes from within, and it's from God. And, and this song in Jesus' name is so powerful. And there's, a, there's one of the verses, uh, stanzas say, I pray that your circumstances will change. But the hope of the gospel is that even if they don't, and we're not healed, and we're still grieving, and we're still sad, he is faithful. And his promises are true. Can you say amen like you mean it? I heard some amens. So we've got a couple of points we're going to go over. The uphill climb. Seek first the kingdom. Second point, the misunderstandings that hinder us. Hitting the wall of resistance. The rhythm of life. Joy within. And finally, the ultimate triumphal entry. It seems this is the this will be the sixth Easter for me at this church. I'm so honored and blessed to be among you and be the pastor here. Um, we count it a privilege and an honor. But I must say, um, I feel like we're approaching Easter differently, maybe than we ever have. We've been through a lot together this last year or two. Loss, trauma, grief. Tears, I know I had many. Sadness, pain. However, I believe that through all this, our eyes are more open as we approach, well, this message on the triumphal entry. I know this has hit me different than it ever has. And Easter, our eyes are seeing things 
differently. I want to give a message to encourage you this morning that no matter what you're going through, that you don't give up. That you have an understanding of what the journey is about. People are leaving the faith. I don't know if you've heard, but like over the internet, and it talks about people leaving the faith. And, and people come to church, I believe, and they don't want to be entertained. It feels good at the time, but what do people want? What I think, and tell me if you disagree, not right now, later. <laughs> people want to be fed. Give me something. I want to know God more. People know when you're not asking them to think. I'm challenging you to think. Look at the scriptures yourself. See if what I have to say is true. On, in our Bible studies, we have Catholics, Methodists, Presbyterians, Baptists, Pentecostals, just to name a few. And why are they all coming together? People are hungry for verse-by-verse Bible study. Jesus' triumphal entry is one of those realities, I believe, that will shed light on your journey and my journey. I intend to offer you a mind-blowing view of the triumphal entry that will impact your life. Now, I'd like to submit to you my presupposition in this is that Jesus' actions... He taught, what he did was prophetic, but sometimes how he acted was prophetic. Sometimes he taught through what he did. And this triumphal entry is an example of that. Point one, the uphill climb, as Wilfred read. They brought to Jesus the donkey, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. He is going up. He is ascending to Jerusalem. This is a fulfillment of Zachary 9, 9 to 10. Rejoice greatly. Next slide. O daughter Zion, shout out loud, O daughter, o daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This is a fulfillment of prophecy. Now, this, the people recognize this, that this is, this is a kingly act that Jesus is doing. He is claiming to be king. The Romans might not have understood because when their victors entered a city, they didn't come in on a donkey, did they? How did they come in? Yeah, a chariot, a white stallion, power. Jesus is, is the message, I believe, for us here today. Is yes, we're all on a hill of ascent. We're all climbing uphill. That's life. But we're supposed to climb. Climbing makes us stronger. Here's the reality for you, just a little nugget. You're in school. Not just during my 33-minute sermon, whatever it is. You're in school by everything you go through. God is trying to teach you what life's like. People aren't necessarily kind. People aren't necessarily thinking of you. That in this world, you will have trouble. You're in school. And when this clicks and go, whoa, this is, world's, life's tough. You know what I hope it does? I hope, I hope it makes you want to say, I can't wait to get back with God's people. Because I know the people in this room. Most of you. The rest of you, I'm still, the verdict's still out. But you will find love here. You will find support here. This church takes care of each other. That's why we're supposed to come together. It's one of the reasons we need each other. We're supposed to come to church. Life is an uphill battle, but we're supposed to go up this hill. We're supposed to follow Jesus. He made us a promise. I've come that you might have life and life to the fullest. But he also said that God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Our ascent looks different than other people's. Why other people are using power and trickery and dishonest means. 
That is not how we walk up the hill. That's not how we live out there. We absorb the insults. We forgive. Right? We offer. We're generous. Just like Jesus. Jesus didn't ride on a white stallion. He rode on a donkey because his victory would come through humility. It's an upward climb. That's the life we're in. I just want you to know that. You're in school. With everything that happens to you, God's trying to teach you something. But we need to turn to the Scriptures to find out more. Point two. Misunderstandings that hinder us. So, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They were excited. Here comes Jesus fulfilling a prophecy. They're going to be delivered from Rome. They misunderstood, didn't they? Did Jesus come to deliver them from Rome? No. The Bible says he came to deliver them from the unseen forces of evil, from sin, from darkness. But... I want to point something out different this year. Something's hitting me different about this. And you know what I think? It's the context is coming to light for me, and I want you to see it. If you look at the context, when the religious leaders complain, Jesus doesn't say, I know, I can't, I, they're confused about why I'm here. The religious leaders tell, tell, them, tell them to be quiet. Jesus didn't say, oh, I know, they don't understand. He didn't. He said, well, you know what he said, if the rocks cry out, which we'll get to that verse. This is not a negative thing. Jesus accepts your praises whether you understand the situation or not. Whether you really understand him. And I want to give you another nugget. Your Christian walk, your journey of faith, this is important. It's not what you think it is. God doesn't work through formulaic means. He doesn't work like if I'm a good person, then things are going to turn out for me. If I have enough faith, then everything will be okay. I remember counseling with someone, helping someone who told me that, actually I was there when it happened, she, was, she had cancer and, and she was in her last stage and, and some well-meaning Christian said, if you had more faith, God would heal you. They need to go back to class. That is not how it works. God is true to his promises. Right? But there are truths. I should say there are misunderstandings that hinder us. Did this hinder these people? Well, considering that shortly after this, Jesus was crucified, I think it did. Look, this is a wall for some of you. Some of you have left the church or attempted to leave the church because things didn't pan out the way you thought they should. You did your part. God didn't do his. The family still broke apart. apart. Someone still did something awful. There's still sickness. There's still terrible things going on. When you hit this, when you, it's like hitting a wall, which takes us to point three. A wall of resistance. We want God to meet our expectations. We want God to meet our plans, and it doesn't work like that. I want you to know that. But God is faithful, and he keeps his promises. So when you hit this wall of resistance, here's what I want you to do. Well, first off, look what Jesus, what happened to Jesus. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said, Jesus, rebuke your disciples. What are they saying? They're saying to him, you and I know that they think you're the king, and you and I know that's ridiculous. They're telling them to be quiet. What is Jesus hitting? He's hitting a wall. Are you hitting a wall right now in your life? Do you feel like this isn't supposed to go like this? Do you feel like God's just not there for me? You're forgotten? I want you to know something. 
This wall is part of the journey. You're supposed to be at a wall. This is critical for you right now. As you grow as a Christian, when you hit the wall, you're going to make a left or a right. You're either going to turn and go, well, I'm going to still be a Christian on the outside, but you're not going to dive into your relationship with God. You'll become bitter. You'll struggle with resentfulness. You'll struggle with negative thinking. You'll struggle with, struggle with anger. Everybody hits a wall. Are you there yet? One's coming. It's going to be difficult. I am challenging you today to push through. I want you to know, when your prayers haven't been answered, when life hasn't panned out the way you wanted it to, when you feel like God has let you down, it's okay to question things. It's okay to struggle with your faith. Can I hear an amen? amen? Guess what happens when you struggle with your faith? It grows. Like walking uphill. What happens when you walk uphill? Your legs get stronger. We're supposed to be struggling. We're supposed to realize at some point that God doesn't work the way we thought he did. We, we, we need to, re well, we all, I think, struggle with, we need to repent of having control issues. God will not be controlled. Now I want to take you to point four. Are you guys okay? Is it too warm in here again? Should we turn on the AC? No. Okay. Last week I thought I was going to melt. <laughs> point four, the rhythm of life. Joy from within. Look at this, look at this. This has never opened up for me before. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The first rock concert. <laughs> I know, that was lame. That was lame, I know. For that to happen, an absolute miracle must happen. Right? Come on, a rock? That's, that's ridiculous. Unless Jesus was speaking symbolically, like the whole thing symbolic, by the way, right? Unless he's speaking symbolically. Do you know what it says in Ezekiel 26? 36. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone. Pay attention. And give you a heart of flesh. What if you're the rock? If the, Israel, if the Jewish people of that time wouldn't cry out, which they did, God's coming for the Gentiles too. He's coming for you. But something needs to happen in you. A miracle needs to happen in you so that you start opening your eyes and opening your hearts to realize that you have needs from God. You need God. You need him in your life. When you grow in your spiritual life, it's not so much what you get from around you, like other people or pastors or YouTube podcasts or whatever you're taking in to feed yourself. There's What we're talking about needs to happen from within. That's the next step of your faith journey. You need to be resourced from within. Keep for getting this. The church, pastors, leaders keep forgetting this. We push people. You need to evangelize. You need to do better. You need to measure up. You need to read your Bibles more. You need to do this, this. And it's pushing on people instead of saying, receive. Let it come into you. It's about thirst. That's what Jesus talked about. It's about hunger. God's grace is more abundant than you can imagine. You no longer pray because it's the Christian thing to do. You start praying, you start reading scriptures, and you start fellowshipping with people because you know you need that. When you start receiving, what happens to you? You start filling up, and then all of a sudden, love comes out of you. Blessings, you start giving to people out of surplus, out of abundance. It's here. It's in our midst. It's other people. Someone just 
shared this after Bible study this week. They said, man, I was at, I won't even say where they were at. They were at a location nearby, and someone was so mean to them, they said they just really needed a hug right now. <laughs> and I said, well, here you go. Guess what she did? She knew that we need each other to heal some wounds. The world's tough. We're supposed to come together and bless each other. You start to understand the ministry of presence. And I'm talking about being in God's presence. Reading the Bible is not a task to do. It's just to sit and hang out with Him. Fellowshipping. There's something happened there. And, and i got to give Jeff Colvin credit. He pointed this out. Jesus said, and two or more are gathered, there I am in your midst, right? I come together. Do you know what he said before that? All authority is given to me, and I'm giving that authority to you. So come together and watch what happens. This whole thing's in the context of some spiritual power that we can't really identify. But something happens, and we're seeing it in Bible studies and at Sunday school, in our meetings, in our fellowships, when Jesus is the center, something magical happens. So what happened? So what ultimately, point five, what ultimately happened that this whole act signified? Paul talked about in Ephesians 4, and this is getting deep. So if I lose you right here, I just want to say, I'm sorry. But it's getting really, it's getting difficult. We talked about this verse for probably an hour at the Bible studies. God's favor is given to each of us, has been given to each of us. It was measured out to us by Christ who gave it. See that? That's why the scriptures say he went to the highest place. Where's that? The right hand of God. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead and who saw him first? Mary, right? And what did she do? The Bible says that she went up to him and she just grabbed him and she's clinging to him. Oh, Jesus, I missed you. You He's back from the dead, right? She's clean. He says, you can't cling to me, Mary. I have to finish my mission. I have to ascend to the right hand of power. I have to go, right? But when he went to the highest place, it says he took captive those who had captured us and gave gifts to people. Paul is talking about when a Roman victory happened, the general would come in and he'd have behind him captive the leaders, the popular, the, the enemy the enemies were in his train as he enters the city. Paul is saying when Jesus ascended, he took captives, those who take you captive. Those things that discourage you. I don't know where your beliefs are with demons and, and Satan. And that's okay. We don't all have to agree on this. But I'm trying to tell you, whether you believe it symbolically or reality like I do, when Jesus ascended, your life changed when you believe in him. He took down the powers. He captured them. He took the captive into captivity. A reality that we cannot see, touch, or smell has changed. You're going to see things differently now. You're going to know you don't belong in this world. You belong with your people. And then we spread out the gospel to other people. Paul wrote it this way in Colossians 2. When you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all of your sins. He canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He's taken it away, nailing it at the cross. And then he says the strangest thing. Having disarmed, next slide, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing them over the cross. This isn't about, really, about what happened at the ascension. It, that, it's, it's really about what happened to us. We were freed. Jesus said, if the Son has set you free, you've been free indeed. Live free. Walk the hill, but walk it together. The rocks will cry out if we don't. I was... Just a week before last, I was thinking about how it's so night. I mean, in Chicago, you hear a lot of horns and car alarms. In where I live, you hear a lot of birds singing. Can you hear the birds singing where you live? 
Do you ever think about it? Do you ever go outside and just listen how loud they are? They're singing up a storm. What about at night? Anybody singing at night? Who's singing at night? Crickets, toads, frogs. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a zookeeper here. I don't know. But somebody's singing really loud. You can hear the crickets. You can hear the frogs. You can hear... God made all of creation sing. Maybe we should get the message and join in. Live your life as a rock who cries out because God has changed your heart and your life. Let's sing about it. Would you please stand if you're able Sing together. Tell me the stories of Jesus. Hymn number 190, verses 1 and 3. Pray, send us out as rocks who can sing because you have changed us. You have set us free. Help us to learn to sing about it. In Jesus' name, amen.